but it's been a long way, but we're here. Hello, my name is Jeremy Bellucci and I am a research scientist here at Natural Resource Gerbix Museet and I would like to talk to you about an, an exciting discovery that we made here. Um, answering the question, what if an Apollo astronaut actually brought back a piece of Earth from the Moon? And to understand that question, we have to understand how both the Moon and Earth formed. So let's start with the Earth. The Proto-Earth, which is the name that we give to the body that will become the Earth, formed at 4.57 billion years ago, like all of the rest of the things in the solar system. Then, at 4.45 billion years ago, a Mars-sized body, roughly one-third the size of our current planet, named Theia, impacted the proto-Earth. This impact caused a big energetic reaction, mixing and swirling particles from both the impactor and Earth, which would later become the Moon. So the Moon is essentially a part of the Earth and Theia. So this impact uh, exchanged material between the two bodies, making them basically chemically identical. Now once this happened, the Earth began a cycle of plate tectonics, and the Moon remained frozen. Uh, its crust has remained pristine since the beginning of the Moon's formation. So at 3.9 billion years ago, there was a large meteor shower towards the inner solar system. And this meteor shower was called the Late Heavy Bombardment. And we believe that this Late Heavy Bombardment formed all of the craters that we can see on the Moon with our own eyes, and formed similar craters on Earth. But because of the plate tectonic processes acting on Earth, these craters were erased. But since these impact craters were so big and so large, we believe that one of them could have knocked a piece of the Earth off of the Earth to land on the Moon which at the time was three times closer than it is today. So, in July of 1969, Apollo 11 went to the moon and started to bring back samples. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. After Apollo 11, there were five subsequent missions that were successful and brought back, in total, 382 kilograms of lunar samples. Most of these samples are a rock type called breccia. And inside of a breccia, um, you have pieces of different rocks. So in theory, a breccia could be, uh, could be made up of all of the types of rocks on the lunar surface, like a rock from the Earth that was transported there during the late heavy bombardment. So when we started to analyze all of the rocks brought back from the moon, we started to see one big difference and the chemistry between the two bodies. On Earth, we have water and availability for oxygen to participate in chemical reactions and in rock forming processes. On the moon, there is no water. So the availability for oxygen to be present isn't there. And the temperature of the rock forming systems is much higher than the Earth. In February of 1971, Apollo 14 went to the moon and landed by a crater called Cone Crater When not playing golf, the astronaut Alan Shepard went to the rim of Cone Crater and picked up a 9 kilogram breccia. This breccia was nicknamed Big Bertha, and it had clasts in it that were a strange color for the moon. Most lunar rocks, rocks that come from the moon, are black. And inside of this breccia, there was a white piece. And white pieces are very strange for the moon. And when scientists started to investigate this white piece of rock, they realized it was a granite, which is very strange for the moon and very common on Earth. So when we started to investigate this, this granite, we learned that it had minerals not typically found in the moon, and we wanted to investigate this class further using the analytical techniques that we have at Natura Historiska. Hi again. So this is our lab here at Natura Historiska Riksmuseet, and this is where we analyzed individual minerals in the piece from the Apollo 14 breccia. 
And what we do here is we look at the chemistry of individual minerals. And in our granite class that had two minerals that we specialize in analyzing here, zircon and quartz. Zircon is important because it contains a lot of uranium, which decays into lead at a known rate. When we measure the ratio between uranium and lead, we can understand the crystal's age. Zircon also contains titanium, and so does quartz. And we, when we measure the titanium concentration in quartz and zircon, we can learn what temperature and what pressure a rock crystallized at. And lastly, zircon contains rare earth elements, and when we look at the pattern of rare earth elements in the zircon crystal, we can learn if free oxygen was present. And again, as I said before, this free oxygen is probably the biggest diagnostic feature when trying to find a piece of earth on the moon. So when we put the sample in our instrument here, we analyzed the uranium and lead in the zircon, and we learned that this crystal was 4.01 billion years old. When we looked at the titanium concentration in the zircon and the quartz, we learned that our rock crystallized at 750 degrees and at 7 kilobars pressure. 7 kilobars is 7,000 times the pressure that is at atmosphere which we experience on the surface of the Earth. Both of these things are very strange for the Moon. On the Moon, as I said, it's very high temperature, and because the Moon has less gravity than the Earth, the pressure is also much too high. The pressure of 7 kilobars corresponds to about 170 kilometers deep in the moon, which is impossible to excavate via a large impact, and it only corresponds to about 20 kilometers on Earth, which is very feasible to knock a piece off. And lastly, when we looked at the rare earth element pattern in our zircon crystal, we noticed that it formed under the presence of oxygen, which again, as I said, is highly unusual for the moon. So when we understand these three chemical systems, the age, the temperature, the pressure, and the presence of free oxygen in the crystals using our instrument here, we have determined that the easiest explanation for our data is that this piece of the moon that was brought back actually formed on Earth and was knocked off by a large impact during the late heavy bombardment to sit on the lunar surface waiting for Alan Shepard to collect it during Apollo 14, bring it back to the Earth for us to analyze here at Natura Storska.